heard you talk a lot about you you want Australia to be a net exporter of music. What does that actually mean? I've had someone say you're on drugs and you won't live long enough for <laughs> that to ever happen. Um, if it means what I think it means, <laughs> I fucking love it. But I just want to hear it from you. It it means um, it does it means a couple of things. Um, but when we say net exporter, what we're actually saying is that we are selling more than we're buying. So the same as any other industry, if we if we had a car industry that you're selling more cars than you're buying. So the money is uh, coming into the country rather than going out. So crudely, that's what I would mean by being a net exporter of music. And, you know, I'm, I'm nearly tired of hearing myself say this, but there's currently three net exporting music nations in the world. There's the US, the UK and Sweden. And uh, Sweden has a long history of pop writers primarily who've been churning out the hits for artists all around the world. And when we look at Sweden as a geographically isolated country uh, of eight, 8 million people, we go, well, surely it's not such a big thing for us to similarly have a goal that says we could be a net exporter and what would you need to do to make that happen? And Jenny Morris summarised it beautifully, I think, in her uh, National Press Club address in August last year where she said, you know, we should set a vision for becoming a net exporter of music. And really, you know, how long is that going to take? Is it two years, 10 years? In a sense, what's important is to set the vision and then go, what are the levers that you would need to play with to achieve that? Well, depending on how much effort you put into those levers will probably determine how long it takes. But I, I, don't, I don't accept for a minute that it's not achievable. And I think it should be a question that the breadth of the music industry look at and go, what are we, what are we doing in that space to invest locally? Um, Was that the same speech where she talked about education yeah. being a key? Yeah. yeah. So we we looked at, and again, you know, this this you know needs to stand up to cross examination and further investigation. But when we sort of looked at, um, so what would you need to do to become a net exporter? first thing I sort of thought was, well, education. So what happens in schools now? And, you know, I have the... Uh, you were a music teacher. Uh, yeah, well, that's right, you know. Um, you were there. People may well ask what... <laughs> Did you get thrown out of that job? Why are you not in that job anymore? Uh, but, you know, I loved being a high school music teacher. And, and back then, it was very much driven by a classical curriculum. And the kids that did elective music were going to try and get into symphony orchestras and play classical instruments. And there wasn't a lot in the curriculum that catered for the kid coming through who probably would have a career, hopefully, in the contemporary industry. And... My, my sort of observation has been through some of the programs that APRA runs, so our song makers program in schools, is that there's not a lot there to bridge the gap between high school and the commercial contemporary industry. Uh, and if you did have more in that space and you talked more about songwriting in schools and what comes with songwriting, people would have a greater appreciation of potential careers. At the moment, if you're talking to mum and dad, and their kids doing music, they go, well, hopefully they're studying law as well because they probably won't make a dollar as, mm. a, as a musician. But if you talk to people about the intellectual property value of a song, then irrespective of what happens to you as a performing artist, every time that song's played, you earn a royalty. Sweden earns more royalties, music royalties, per head of population than any other country in the world. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about it from a cultural perspective, from an economic perspective, from a social perspective. The vision of becoming a net exporter of music stacks up and I'm going to push really strongly for it. I think it's something that it's a, it's a great thing to put out there. It's, a, it's something that government MPs can get their head around and they will ask the question, so how do we do that? The minute somebody asks how, you've got them on the hook. They're already engaged and you, you, you can work on something. And, and to me, again, it goes back into that space of the music industry has always been fast moving, agile. It's, it's weathered storms and come out the other side. It was the first content industry to go digital. We're capable of moving fast and being really smart and being global. Uh, so I, I think it's a, I, th I think the potential for Australia and New Zealand, I'd throw into the mix. And obviously I do that because APRA has a presence in New Zealand. But I think there's enormous potential. And you, you look at the talent here and we punch well above our weight. So we should, we should leverage it. <laughs> <laughs>